In my last Lucy Link video, I showed you how you can use their cloud storage solution to edit collaboratively with others across the world. Today with you, I want to take a look at their new integration, Lucid Link Panel for Premiere Pro, which supercharges these remote editing workflows by allowing you to manage pinning and caching of your media directly inside of Premiere Pro, giving you all the performance benefits of local storage and all of the other benefits of cloud storage and Lucid Link merged into one. Let me show you how it works. For those of you that are just discovering Lucid Link for the first time, let me do a quick explainer of what it is, how it works, and also things like pinning and cache. So Lucid Link is the new way for teams to work together on projects in real time without having to download and sync media locally. It's fast, simple, and secure, and acts just like a regular hard drive plugged into your computer, but with all of the benefits of a cloud storage solution. So take this footage that I've just shot in my studio as an example that I want my remote editor to get working on. Traditionally, I'd have to either ship them the SSD or upload all 200 gigabytes worth of footage to something like Google Drive, and then they'd have to wait their end for it all to download before starting on the edit. With Lucidlink, they can get started straight away and could even have instant access to the footage as I'm uploading it. There's no wait to download the full file because Lucidlink streams only the bits of the file they need as and when they need it. Let me just emphasize that point because you don't have to download your media first just to start working. You can play your media and even start editing it directly from the cloud. That's just some of the key features of Lucidlink. If you want to find out more, I did a whole video on it. I'll link to it up in the corner or have a link down in the description below. Now let's talk about pinning because that is a key point of making the panels integration work. So we just talked about how really the key benefit of Lucidlink is that it streams the data or only the data that you need in real time as your app. So in this case, Adobe Premiere Pro is requesting it. So as you're playing through the timeline, it's pulling down that data from the cloud and delivering it to you. But what happens in those instances where maybe you're working with really large 4K video files on a bad home internet connection where you're just not going to be able to stream those down because your internet connection won't keep up with the size and the data rate of the video files. Well, Lucidlink have created a feature to help solve this and that is what pinning is. So pinning basically allows you to tell Lucidlink in advance of you needing the files to pull down those files from the cloud and pull down all the data that it needs into your local cache on your computer. So that actually when you then go into your editor and start playing back that file, it's not trying to stream down the data in real time. It's just playing it from your local cache on your computer, on your local drive. There's a load of benefits to pinning over something like a traditional download workflow with something like Google Drive or Dropbox, for example. Firstly, with Lucidlink, pin data keeps the same file path for all users, so there's no need to have to relink media, like you would have to do if you had downloaded the file. So when I send my project and all my files to my remote editor, because we're working on a Lucidlink file space, they just open up the project and all the media appears within it. While if they were working off of a Dropbox workflow, for example, they would have to download the media file a folder with all the media in, download the project file, open up the project and then relink all the media. So it saves that time and makes it so much more simpler. Secondly, pinned media stays up to date. So if something changes in the cloud, it's also changed on my local cache or if I change a version in my local cache, it will be reflected in the cloud all automatically and in the background without the user even realizing it. But on a download workflow, when that download data changes, it needs to be synchronized with all the other collaborators. So that means downloading the same data again. Thirdly, pinning with Lucidlink gives you much more control and security over your data because pin data still gives an administrator the ability to instantaneously remove or revoke access for any files or folders for any user anywhere in the world. Whilst with a Google Drive or a Dropbox download workflow, once that data has been downloaded onto the machine, you don't really have any more control over it. And finally, with pinning, all of the native features that are built inside of these applications for collaboration, they will still work. So things like Premiere Productions, Team Projects, Bin Locking, for example, they'll still work perfectly fine. So you really do get all of the benefits of cloud storage, along with the performance, the added performance of a local disk. So now that you know what pinning is and some of the benefits that it can bring you, let me show you how you can increase your cache size on your machine so you can pin more data and then we'll get into the Lucidlink panel for Premiere Pro. I've got Lucidlink running on my Mac here and if we just go to the dashboard in the top right hand corner, 
go to the settings icon here. It will ask you to enter in your password each time you open up the control panel. Um, but the two main things that we want to concentrate on here are the local cache size and the cache location. So by default, the cache is set to five gigabytes, but you can increase this to whatever you want. So if you know, for example, that you're going to be working with 500 gigabytes worth of data that you might want to pin onto your computer, you can set this to a much lar larger number. Bearing in mind, if I just hover over this little icon here, it does actually tell you that 80% of whatever you set this number to, you can use for pinning. So you might want to set this a little bit bigger because um, just so there's some headroom there. So let's say uh, I'm going to be working with 200 gigabytes worth of footage. I might set this to 250, for example. And it's as simple as that. There we go, straight away we've allocated now 250 gigabytes on my local hard drive that can be used for pinning data. The other thing I just want to quickly show you is if you want to, you can change your uh, cache location. So at the moment it's just set to the default, but if for example you were using an external hard drive and you wanted to use that as the uh, drive that LucidLink uses for cache, you could do that and set that in here. To install LucidLink Panel for Premiere Pro, it couldn't be easier. Just click the link down in my description below and that will take you to this website here, which is LucidLink's website, just explaining what the panel is and how it works. But the main button that you want to find is this one up at the top here. Click the Try Now button and it will take you over to Adobe Exchange and ask you to open Creative Cloud Desktop app and it will take you to the panel page within the uh, desktop app. Now I've already got the panel installed, but there'll be an install button here and you can click it and install the panel for absolutely free. It doesn't cost anything. It really is that simple. And once it's installed, just go over and open Premiere Pro, open a project, go up to window here at the top, extensions, and then click on Lucid Link. And that will open up the Lucid Link panel. It looks a little bit like this. Now the first thing I, I actually like to do is dock the panel. So I'm just going to click and drag and dock it over here and then it just docks it in the left and I quite like working like that. The second thing I like to do, which is a little tip, is go over to the settings cog here within the panel and just click on the settings optimized button there uh, and that will optimize all of the settings for Premiere Pro and make some tweaks just so that it runs smoother with this cloud workflow. Um, and that's a really good tip just to make things run a little nicer. And once you've done that, that's pretty much it set up, ready to go. Now, let me just explain what you're seeing here within the panel quickly. So on the right hand side, we've got the pin data and capacity and the uh, total cache. Now I set this machine here. It's a, a Windows machine running in an AWS uh, uh, instance somewhere in the world. I set this to have a cache of 50 gigabytes. So that's what we're seeing there, how much of the cache is being used for that total of 50 gigabytes. If I wanted to, I could go into my Lucid Link settings and change that and up that. And then the pin data, at the moment I haven't pinned any of my media, so that's why it's saying zero. And the capacity, do you remember from before, it's 80% of your total cache. That is why our capacity for pinned media is 40 gigabytes. If we upped the cache, it would up the amount of capacity that we can pin. So now you know the lay of the land with panel, let's put this thing to the test. Okay, so here's the scenario. I've got a bunch of footage that my cameraman has given me from a shoot I did recently uh, showing the B-roll of a Formula One studio. And so I've got it all here in my Lucid link. And if we actually look at the folder, we can see it comes to a total of 131.8 gigabyte. And this footage, if we just open it up here and go into the inspector, you can see it is 4K footage. So 3840 by 2160 shot at 50 frames per second. So it is quite chunky media. I've also got a whole folder here with proxy media. So this is the same footage that's been down res to 1080p 50. So all of the original footage plus the proxies and I've also got a project in here because what I did is I, in Adobe Premiere Pro, I wanted to select some of the shots that I like and put them, lay them out on a timeline. And now what I'm going to do is send this whole folder to my remote editor so that they can clip out some of their best bits and put together a few edits for social media. So that's the plan. Now, in a traditional workflow with using, let's say, Google Drive or Dropbox, what I would have to do is upload this whole 100 and what did we say it was? 131.8 gig up to Google Drive and Dropbox. And then on their end, on the remote editor's end, they would have to wait for that all to download before they could even start working. With LucidLink, we, and especially with Panel, we can cut out a bunch of that time. And actually on their end, they, you'll see they only need to download a small part. So to start this then, what I'm actually going to do is create a LucidLink account for my remote editor. So I'm just going to go up to the control panel up here and I'll show you how easy this is. 
We'll log in, open the control panel, go to users. I'm just going to create a quick user called YouTube editor. Give him the usual password and click add user. Now I'm going to give them permission to that whole F1 studio B roll folder, and it's going to be read and write permission. And that's all I really need to do. They have now got access to this whole F1 studio B roll folder. And let's prove that. So I'm going over to their machine now. Now this is actually a machine running in an AWS instance somewhere in the world, but you don't have to use virtual machines. This will work perfectly fine on your Mac or PC from at home or anywhere in the world. Now this machine has got nothing on it at the moment. None of the footage, none of the 131 gigabytes worth of files, but watch because within seconds it will have access to it all. So I'm going to log in with its video, log in with those details, which is YouTube editor. And now we are logging in on lucid link on my YouTube editors machine. And again, that can be anywhere in the world. So if we open the folder here, you can see instantly they have got access to my F1 studio B roll folder. All of the original media is here. So this is all of the 4k files are here. And if we scroll back up to the top, all of the proxy files are here. And also in there is that project file. We can actually open up straight away. We can open up in premiere the timeline that I did. So my remote editor hasn't had to spend time downloading that a whole 131 gig from Dropbox or Google Drive before they can open up this Adobe Premiere project. So we'll let it open here. And you can see it will start linking the media. And because it's all happening in a, in a LucidLink ecosystem using LucidLink file spaces, you can see I haven't had to relink any of the media or anything like that. It is all just there and appeared. Now, how can we better this with panels? Because at the moment, none of this media is pinned locally onto my editor's machine. It's actually streaming it in real time. And that might be fine for 1080p footage and things like that. But if you're working with a slow internet connection and you're trying to edit with 4K footage, 4K 50 frames per second footage like I am, you're going to run into some issues. You're going to have buffering and things like that, stuttering with the playback. So that's where pinning comes in. And Lucid Link Panels, what we can see here is, let me just show you exactly what Panels is telling us. So if we look at it here, we can actually see it's now got sequence number one. So this is the sequence that I put together, the timeline that I put together for my editor of some of the shots that I liked. It's actually saying that within this sequence, there are 5.1 gigabytes worth of data of the original media. So all of these clips add up to 5.17 gigabytes. And then it's done the exact same thing for the proxies as well. So rather than us trying to stream this data in real time from the cloud as we play it back, we can actually just say in here, pin this data. Now, of course, if we wanted to, we could, if I just minimize this and open up uh, my LucidLink file space here, we could go and find, so we could go into Premiere Pro. We can say, okay, I need this file name. So row 2557, open it up, find it in here, 2557, down here, right-hand click, and then click pin. But you can see, especially if you've got a lot of files, that is gonna take a long time. And this is the massive advantage of LucidLink Panel. It just cuts all of that out. So you don't have to download or pin a whole folder because you're actually able to just right hand click here and say pin all clips. And that won't pin every bit of media in the folder. That will just pin the media that is used on the timeline in the sequence. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say pin all clips here. And what we can see straight away is LucidLink is now pulling down from the cloud all of those clips that are in the sequence. And so now when we go to play it back, it won't play it back and stream it from the cloud. It will actually use the data on our local cache, on our local disk. So it's pinned all that down. I don't know why these don't quite add up. Uh, it could be a bug. This is pretty new. And I'm going to do the same thing for proxies as well. So I'm going to pin all of the proxy media as well. We can see it adds that straight on. And now you can see these little icons here have turned white because that's showing that they're pinned. And one of the other things we can do is we can click these three dots here. We can actually open the clip view and this will show us 
a list of all the individual clips in the timeline. And we can see they're all, all the pins there are white showing that we've actually pinned that media. But if we wanted to, if we didn't want to pin all of the sequence, we could actually click the three dots next to any clip and choose to pin or unpin the proxy or the original media for each on an each individual clip basis. So you get really granular control within the panel, uh, which is really useful there. So now you can see I'm able to play back this footage buttery smooth and bearing in mind, this isn't even a local instance for me. It's running on an AWS server somewhere, but I'm able to scrub through without any issues at all of this 4k media, even slow-mo clips like this plays back. Absolutely fine. No issues at all. We'll find another one here. Slow-mo clip of the cameras there. One of me blinking. Um, but you can see, Within a few minutes, I've been able to get started and get to work straight away. And rather than a traditional download workflow where we would have had to wait to download that whole 131 gigabyte folder with all the media and the projects in, actually all I've really brought down to my local disk because I pinned it is 5.04 gigabytes here of data. So we've gone from 130 gigabytes to just five. So we're saving space as well on my local disk. And that's just going to mean we can see here if we t if I turn off proxies now we're working with the original 4K media. If I hit play, you can see it plays back without any issues whatsoever. Full 4K, 50 frames per second footage, playing back buttery smooth. And that's because now that data is stored on our local cache on our actual local machine rather than it trying to stream in real time from the cloud. And of course, the beauty of panel is that it's all done inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So you don't have to leave the application to go and pin your media. It just keeps it simple and keeps it all contained inside the application that you want to be working in. And remember, I said the collaboration features still work. Well, that's because the project is saved inside of LucidLink. So Premiere Pro's native bin locking still works. And if I make any changes on my AWS machine, my local machine shows the new version alert here, and I can click that to load in the new version. Features that just wouldn't work with a traditional download workflow. So there you have it, a first look hands-on demo of the new LucidLink panel for Premiere Pro. It's available now, so if you want to give it a go yourself, remember the link is down in my description below. You can install it for free, give it a go, and make use of all the benefits that you get from not just LucidLink, but now the panel integration with inside Premiere Pro as well to really speed up your remote editing workflow. If you found this video useful, please do just take two seconds to hit the thumbs up button. It really helps me and the channel. Also talking of the channel, if you want more videos just like this, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and then you'll be notified when new videos are released. If you've got any questions about today's video, LucidLink or panel in general, put them down in the comments below. I read through all of them and try my best to get and reply to as many of them as possible. And if you've got specific questions that you need answered, whether it be about LucidLink or other things like studio builds and broadcast kit, you can always email me on the email address on screen now and we can organize a one-to-one -one consulting session to get those questions answered. And once you've done all that, guys, I will see you on the next video.